Begin our bulletin here. The ANC Limpopo Provincial Conference is wrapping up today. Stan Matabata has been re-elected for a third term as the party's provincial chairperson. Matabata beat uh, uh, Dixon Masemelo and Florence, who will be the deputy chairperson. For more on this, we are joined by senior reporter Sipa Mandlagoge and Moloko Moloto. They join us from Polokwane now. Um, to, to both of you, I think uh, it's been quite an eventful weekend for uh, the ANC in Limpopo. Uh, Spamandla, maybe you can start off with uh, perhaps some of the remarks made by the president with regards to uh, the stash that was found in his home and him claiming that he never evaded tax. Indeed, that was going to be the most interesting and the talking point of this 10th provincial conference of the ANC in Lipopo. There was no way President Cyril Ramaphosa would come to this conference and avoid not to talk about that embarrassing scandal. He had to address the matter of the theft at his farm, despite the fact that he did not give much. You know, there was no new information. He rehashed a statement that was written by his spokesperson, Vincent Makwenya. The only thing that was just there is that it was President Sir Ramaphosa giving his voice to that statement. But, you know, it's a very damaging and embarrassing scandal for him. He came to this conference to close what has been a very smooth conference of the ANC in Lipopo. Towards the end of his speech, he had to assure his constitu his constituency, he had to assure the delegates that he has not done anything wrong. Politically, they bought it, but honestly speaking, President Cyril Ramaphosa still owes the people of South Africa more explanation because he just said, I did not do anything wrong. He did not answer questions even afterwards when the media tried to press him to answer basic and simple questions. He said, wait for law, you know, enforcement processes to take place. The matter is being investigated. But inside, when he was addressing the delegates to the 10th provincial conference of the ANC Lipopo, he did say the man was from the sale of cattle. He said he was a farmer who sells livestock, and sometimes people will buy in cash, others will do transactions, but that money was from the sale of animals at his Palapala farm here in Lipopo. Let's take a listen to how he addressed the delegates on this matter. I was not involved in any criminal conduct, and once again I pledge my full cooperation with any form of investigation. Now, due to the investigation, I will not really be able to engage deeply or further on this matter, as it should allow the due process to take place. However, I would like to say that I'm a farmer. I'm in the cattle business and the game business. And through that business which has been declared in Parliament and all over, I buy and I sell animals. Sometimes people buy these animals and some of the people who have bought some of the animals, some of them are here. I do it, yes. I do it through, the sales are sometimes through cash or sometimes through transfers. Some of the people who are offshore customers and who are sometimes local, they come through and buy animals, and some of them come also to hunt on the farm. And so this that's being reported was a clear business transaction of selling animals. The amount involved is far less than what has been bended in the press. Babang this morning, Bariki billion rand. Babang Bariki the four million dollars and so forth. I want to say it's far less. Some are casting aspersions about me and money. I want to assure you, comrades, that all this was money from proceeds from selling animals. I have never stolen money from anywhere, be it from our taxpayers, be it from anyone, I have never done so. And will never do so. I've never stolen money from our taxpayers. My integrity as a leader 
will never allow me to do so. I will never be able to do so. ANC President Sir Ramaphosa addressing delegates to the 10th Provincial Conference of the ANC in Lipopo, a president who's on a PR exercise to try and do away with one of the most damaging scandals of his presidency. But the delegates here in Lipopo bought it. However, it's clear that there is more explanation to be done by President Sir Ramaphosa of the ANC and the country. Mulogomuloto Baba, what do you make of what the president said? Many people will say, well, he was not convincing at all because there was nothing new that he offered there. He was denying everything. We are not saying he must you know, accept things, but at least South Africans would have expected him to be very thorough in answering questions. Also saying the amount of money involved there is nothing, is nothing compared to what is being reported, but he did not say how much is involved, and I'm sure that will not affect the investigation of this matter. What do you make of his statement inside that plenary one? Well, Gorge, the reality of the matter is that, uh, firstly, um, we should be not necessarily happy uh, at the fact that uh, he has uh, spoken out on his own volition on his first public appearance since uh, this scandal broke. However, as South Africans, we definitely deserved an explanation from him. So it was not necessarily a favor. However, I think that as South Africans, we should not fall into the trap of thinking or perceiving President Sir Ramaphosa as a victim of anything here. He said that um, some of these things are political. He is a political activist. He plays in a political space. He knows it's dirty. No surprises there. And he, he didn't de even say who's responsible for this political activity. Absolutely. He also went on to say that he will continue to fight crime. South Africans expect him crime and corruption. South Africans definitely expect him to do that. However, here there are questions. I mean, South Africa with its sophisticated banking system, what was that money, whatever amount it is, because he steadfastly removed, refused to tell us how much it is. As you say, if he says it was just 100,000 rand, exactly how is that going to jeopardize the investigations? But this is Cyril Ramaphosa, the man that is known. In the past, he has bought cars, he has bought animals worth millions. So it is not as if that he was selling cattle from my village, which would cost 10,000 rand. Americans would not fly into South Africa simply to buy an animal that's worth 10,000 rand. So the money definitely is substantial. Why was it not in the banking system? So I think definitely South Africans need more answers. And as you say, he was really repeating what Mr. Magwenya, Vincent Magwenya, the spokesperson, has said before. And also looking at the fact that, you know, it's not as if he had a choice to speak out today. This was his first public appearance after Arthur Fraser opened that criminal case. It was the first public appearance after his spokesperson issued the statement confirming the dead crime at the president's farm. But today he came here fully prepared that he had to somehow answer those questions. And this is how I asked him about how much was stolen, when and where did he open a criminal case. But President Sir Ramaphosa, being President Sir Ramaphosa, was, you know, very evasive in terms of how he answered those questions. Let's take a listen. Even that, obviously, has to be part of the whole process of investing. And I made that very clear here, repeating exactly the statement we issued, but I also added the important parts because there was all these stories flying around. Did I steal money? Did I take a bribe or whatever? And I've made it clear that I've never stole and will never steal money from the, the, the taxpayer. How much was stolen in the fake of All that will also come out as the process move on. ANC President Sir Ramaphosa saying all that will come up in the investigations. Let's move on now and talk about this conference. It's been a very successful provincial conference of the ANC overshadowed by President Sir Ramaphosa and this damaging scandal yeah. which will not go away anytime soon. From yeah. now on up until December he's likely going to be fielding those questions even though he may try to avoid some of them but the scandal is not going to go away anytime soon. Lipopo Provincial Conference well organized very smooth delegates at times 
to discuss policy issues and one of those issues is the issue of how to fight corruption in this province. The previous PEC had to deal with another damaging scandal to the ANC, the VBS scandal. Yeah. The number of political heavyweights had to step aside due to the fact that they were implicated there. Don't you find it ironic that when President Sir Ramaphosa addressed the delegates, he did not mention that matter. Yeah. It took your question to put yeah. it to him, Mulogo, to say, you are talking about fighting corruption, but you said nothing about the VPS scandal yeah. to the delegates. Absolutely. Look, the president said that as the ANC, they are working on making sure that they are building a public servant who is ethical. That's good. But surely that should also extend to the politicians who are driving policy. Now, he talks about a whole lot of ills that he says are there, poor service delivery and all this and that. But he doesn't say a single word when he's addressing the delegates about the VBS. People lost the savings, lifetime savings, in municipalities which invested in that bank. Money never came back. You have a situation, therefore, wherein these delegates saw it important to elect four mayors or four former mayors who invested in that particular bank of VBS. Two of them are the officials. One is the deputy chairperson and the other one is the treasurer. The others are additional members. Now, we had to ask the president to say, your party, the ANC has elevated these people. When you are talking about ethics, yes, we understand they have not been charged corruptly. But let's listen to what he said, because he sounded to be blaming members of the ANC for electing these people. Well, that's the decision of the members of the ANC. They have chosen the leaders as they have. I addressed this issue at the Mpomalanga conference where ANC members had elected somebody who has been charged. And I said to them, we do need to think about the ANC and what this will do to the African National Congress. And that matter was then discussed and then he withdrew. Uh, he stepped aside. So all this is, is evolving and it's a new terrain even for many of us or all of us in the ANC. And people need to internalize precisely what this is all about. Now, the VBS matter is being processed in the courts, in various other fora, and uh, we must also allow that to take its own course. ANC President there, Sir Ramaphosa, on the issue of the VBS after addressing the delegates to the 10th Provincial Conference of the NC in Lipopo. Very brief, Muloko. Let's talk about the issue now of the composition of the Provincial Executive Committee of the NC in Lipopo. Usually you will have those who are contesting being, you know, uh, voted for to make it to the new PEC. In this case, only former Provincial Secretary, that is Soviet Lekhanyane, was voted in. Other contenders did not make it. A bigger chunk of that PEC is composed of people who supported Stan Matabata. Unity and renewal, do you think it's going to work? But also, for Stan Matabata and his deployment to government, there is a very difficult position that he finds himself in, in terms of having yeah. many of the PEC members or former PEC members who are MECs who never made it through the current PEC. Yeah, just quickly, Gorge, of all the 30 PEC members, only one did not support Stan Matabata, Soviet Lekhanyan, as you say, and they voted according to slates. Now, you have a situation wherein now, out of the 10 MECs in this province, five of them were not re-elected into the PEC. They are no longer politically structures. Is um, uh, the Premier, is he really going to be retaining them? 2024 is still very far. These people who were just elected, some of them surely have expectations. You have two officials now in the form of the treasurer as well as the deputy chairperson. Okay, they were MPLs. After they were fired as uh, mayors, they became MPLs. Yes, Florence Razilani came into this conference as the incumbent deputy chairperson. She did not have the blue lights. But can he, does Stan Matabata have uh, uh, the courage to continue ignoring them? I think it's a matter that remains to be seen. But it's interesting that 
in terms of the theme of their conference, they are talking about unity rebuilding and all that, yet they go on to vote completely according to slates. What is it saying about those who have been excluded? Are they going to sit back? Time will tell. Indeed, and that time will tell in a case whereby Stan Matabata has to go to Lutuli House because his province of Lipopo is pushing hard for him to be elected as one of the top officials of the ANC during the December Congress. It's a rep from us in Puluwane, Lipopo. It has been a smooth provincial conference of the ANC in this province compared to what we have seen in the past in other regions and provinces of the ANC. But the bigger work of reuniting the ANC and renewing in one of the poorest provinces in the country begins as of tomorrow. We'll take it back to you, Steve Jones. Thank you so much for that comprehensive update. That's our senior reporter, Sipa Mandla Goge, as well as Moloko Moloto, coming to us live from Polokwane in Limpopo. Uh, of course, that ANC uh, provincial conference wrapping up.